Well, welcome everybody to another edition of Thought Leader Friday. Debbie and I are excited to be here with you. Say hi to everybody, Debbie. Hi. Hey, we're here with Coach Zach from MEC. He's here to talk with us uh, about hiring, the, the when, the how, and the who of hiring. We're thankful to have you here with us, Zach, to, uh, to share your knowledge on this topic. Let's just launch right into it, though, with the, the number one question that Debbie and I and the other coaches on the staff get around this topic is, uh, how do I know when it's the right time for me to make my first hire, or maybe maybe my next hire as I'm growing my business. So grab that and let's run with it. Yeah, well, first of all, let me just say it's great to be with you guys today. I'm super excited about this topic, something we're really passionate about. And uh, yeah, so great question. Uh, lots of our clients uh, find themselves in this position, whether they be an individual agent, or whether they be on the team and they're looking to expand the organization. And then usually the answer comes somewhere in the middle of, I need either some time, some additional time in my life, or I need some more money. And so when we look at it through those two different lenses, um, usually the strategy begins to emerge around, I'm doing all that I can do, and I can't do any more, and I just have no more time in my day. That's usually the time when we're looking to hire some leverage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love, love that. So we're, we're talking about time or we're talking about money, which, which probably leads to the next sequential question here, Zach, which is uh, what if I'm really concerned about uh, forking over that money or, or taking on that cost of that, that first person or that next person? How would you help us work through that? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, um, oftentimes, and it's natural for human beings to, be, to think of it in that respect. I'm doing really good work. I'm really, really busy. I'm making some good money. However, now I've got to look at paying somebody to do this extra work that, that I'd like to have done, but how much is that going to cost me and how long am I going to have to try this out? And here at the co coaching company, we'd like you to look at it slightly differently. Um, rather than looking at it as, as a cost, Bill, maybe you and I can just jump into a quick role play right now and, and maybe sure. we can illustrate this for you. So you be All the right. agent and I'll be the coach and okay. um, you can go bring, the, bring up the concern. Yeah, um, Zach, I, I get it. I, I feel like I'm kind of at the, the end of my rope here. I know I need some more time. Uh, I'd be great with some more money. I, I'm just, I'm concerned about the expense of adding another person to the company. Yeah, listen, I totally appreciate that. And, and that's a natural way to, to feel about this. But let me, let me invite you to think of it slightly differently. Bill, if we had somebody to take away some of the things that you spend a lot of time on, maybe less dollar productive time on marketing things, contract to close things, anything that you do that's not selling houses. Um, if you didn't have to do that work and somebody else was taking care of that for you, my question to you would be how many more transactions would you estimate you could do on a monthly basis if you had that help? Hmm. I mean, the first number that pops into my mind is two, uh, probably two extra a month, mm -hmm. um, may, maybe three. I, I don't know. Let's be conservative and call it one, though. Okay. Let's call it one. And the average sales price in your market is roughly? Uh, 400000 Okay. And commission roughly 3%? Yeah, let's call it three for ease of math. Ease of math. Okay, cool. So, so basically, if you had this person helping you out, taking away some of the things that you spend a lot of time on, you could add one more deal, 12000 additional per month. Mm -hmm. How much do you think a, a good assistant or a good piece of help or leverage would cost? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'll just, my best guess, four or $5,000 a month, something like that. Well, let's call it five. We're going to pay them handsomely, okay? Mm -hmm. So we get an additional twelve, and we pay five. Mm -hmm. I... If you gave me a check for 5,000 bucks and I gave you a check for 12,000 bucks, would that be a cool deal for you? I would take that deal all day. Yeah, yeah. And so you can see, rather than looking at it as a cost, what we're actually buying for ourselves is the opportunity. Now, said slightly differently, if you didn't hire somebody and you did not add that transaction per month, you could look at it through the lens of, this is going to cost me $7,000 a month to not have this person. So in either circumstance, I think you could agree that by having this additional person, this makes a, a really a winning situation for not only the short-term growth of the organization, but really sets us up for some additional moves down the line. It's certainly a, a good short-term move. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I guess I never thought of it that way. Thanks, Zach. Yeah. No, that's that's great. And, and this is this is 
part of why we help coach our clients is because not often is it easy to see that when you're standing in there holding the checkbook going, how much am I going to have to get rid of every month rather than looking at how much more will I make each month and how will this lend to the first, the future growth of my organization? So it's super important to think of it that way. Yeah. Uh, Debbie, what questions or thoughts do you have for Zach on the win side of hiring? Yeah, I think, you know, you mentioned time and, you know, as we've spoke about in the past, both time and money are commodities. And so another question I think we, we get is, um, you know, am I expected to go and work with that extra time or is that time that I'm getting back for me? Because some of our clients are looking for more balance, like that work-life balance. Some right. of them are looking for the opportunity to, to do more deals. So walk me through um, what that would sound like in terms of what we can gain from the time that we get. Sure. And I, and I think it really is it based upon each individual's goals and how they feel about their work-life counterbalance. We know that we're not going to have a 50-50 work and life balance. It's just not something that's achievable. We usually tiptoe across that line. The secret really, though, is, is to not go too far over each side of that line. You have to swing yourself really hard back over. And so, you know, the time element could be just time, more time for yourself, more time for self-care. It could be more time spending with your family and making sure that you're not missing any of those special events if you've got a young family or a growing family. Um, it could be be more time to do the things you just love doing, going on vacation or going golfing or going to the beach or going and getting manicures and pedicures. I mean, whatever it is you'd like to do, if you find yourself short on time now, imagine. And we can also look at this through the lens of, and we don't have to go that big right away. We can say, what if we had time or what if we just had to add one person and, and our leverage uh, piece to maybe get in the house clean? or maybe getting the grocery shopping done, or maybe getting the laundry taken care of. I mean, there's so many of those other things that's oftentimes as business owners, we don't think about because we're always focused on business. But time is time, whether you're spending it personally or whether you're spending it in business. And so we can start small with some of those other pieces and then grow into uh, maybe hiring somebody more permanent or full-time. Yeah, I love that leverage of a full-time assistant or a full-time marketing director it, it can be just that getting back the how many hours you spend on saturday cleaning the house so no. that's right, that's right. Great, great. Or, we, or we put our husbands to work we do, <laughs> <laughs> we do that anyway <laughs> that's right. yeah. no comment no comment <laughs> um yeah, uh, Zach. Okay, so thanks for walking us through the win. I really like the different approaches there, and mm -hmm. uh, and Debbie, I really appreciate you bringing up the time piece. Let's go to who. All right, so so now I'm like, all right, Zach, I got it. Ready to make that next key hire, or whatever it is, wherever it is in my life or my organization. How do I start to dial in the who element of hiring? Right. Well, so this is the next great question to be answered. So when we think about ourselves as as, as business owners. We have to look at all of the things that we're involved in on a daily basis. Now, whether, again, we're an individual agent or whether we're a team and we're continuing to grow, what we have to do is identify the bandwidth of each person, whether it be individually, how, many, how much time do I have during my day and what are all of the tasks that are involved in that? If I'm a team, again, how much do I do during the day and how many of those tasks could I give away? And even more importantly, even looking at the current organization, and making sure that all of our tools and our systems are up to snuff. So for example, if we're not, for, if we're using a, 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 a touch campaign system and it's very haphazard and it's not doing the things that we want it to do, this is a time for us to examine and make sure that all of the things that are tools and systems in our business are actually optimally running. Once we can be assured of that, then it's time to look at what are the tasks that I can give away or can be given away that will be more dollar productive for someone else to do than for the leader to do or another person in the team. And so once we understand bandwidth, now we're looking for a person that is obviously a fit for the role um, when we define that role. So the definition of the role is going to be all of the things that we don't want to do or are not good at doing or we don't enjoy doing them. And we create that job description. Then we're looking for the person that's going to fit the role. We're looking for the person that also is a fit behaviorally and personality wise with the leader and um, also in alignment with the core values of either the individual agent or the growing team. And so those are really three important key elements to figuring out who we're going to hire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. 
Uh, so let's say we, we've made that that at least preliminary decision. Uh, I know uh, the three of us and the rest of our coaches on, on the staff talk about out of uh, the, the different levels of talent or the different levels of experience. I wondered if you might go into that for a sec. Yeah, and so oftentimes I think, and again, I want everybody that's listening uh, to, to our, our recording today um, to just understand that this is a, a system that we as coaches use all the time with the clients that we're working with. It is a process that does take some time and there are some really important elements to begin thinking about as we're looking for a hiring a person. So to answer your question, Bill, when we look at talent, we look at this through kind of three different ways. We have the potential talent, which is somebody that may have skills and have had some experience with doing some of the work but has not done the specific work that we're looking for behaviorally and personality wise, they demonstrate a propensity to do well in the role that we're hiring for. And those people are gonna be a little bit lower on the pay scale. They're not gonna be somebody that's, that, that's been doing it for a long time. However, they are going to require some additional training and some more time spent on that. And so understand not only is getting the right person for the right role a process, the next steps with a potential talented hire also is going to take some time to ramp them up into the role. The second type of talent we're looking at is the emerging talent. And the emerging talent is somebody that may have been in our business or the business that you're running for some time, but may not have been specifically either working for you and your systems or has just begun and has demonstrated some proficiencies and maybe creating some systems and some and, and efficiencies and, and, and what they do and the role that they bring. However, they've not done it and they've not done it consistently. So we're looking at them through the eyes of they're, they're, they're good, they potentially are good. Um, they're emerging from the potential talent into somebody that could do the role. Um, they're going to probably be a little bit more expensive than the potential talent. However, they might require a little less supervision, a little bit less training. So th that kind of balances out. And then, of course, the most sought after, or if you look at it through the the, 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 the lens of um, we want somebody to jump straight into this role and take off and run with it. That's the proven talent. And the proven talent, of course, is just what it sounds like. These people have done the work that you ask or that you're asking to be done. They've done it at a very high level. They've done it with skill and they've grown uh, and they can help grow your organization. So these people are going to be, of course, the most expensive. However, you're going to spend far less time training them into the role and it really just is a matter of helping them on their growth plan for themselves in that role. Yeah, great. Uh, Debbie, what would you like to ask of Zach of the follow-up on the who, or what would you like to add as, as part of the who? Yeah, just curious, in, um, from, ban from a bandwidth extra, you know, exercise, how would, like I have an assistant already, and I'm trying to determine if I need more leverage, mm -hmm. um, or I think I need more leverage, I'm not sure where I need more leverage. What are some areas or what are some questions I can ask myself or ask of my staff currently to figure out, are we at max bandwidth? What should we be looking for in terms of the next hire, that sort of thing? Yeah, so it's a great question. And so this, this always really comes down to assessing where we currently are. And you got to be really honest with this assessment, because if you're not, you can find yourself sort of spinning your wheels. And so there's a couple different exercises that we coach. Um, one of them is called the four quadrants exercise. And I'll kind of demonstrate it for you or illustrate it for you um, verbally. Uh, but if you can think of like taking a blank piece of paper and drawing a big plus in the middle of the paper. And if you take in the top left quadrant and you put a, a plus, go to the top right quadrant and put a minus. Um, go to the bottom left quadrant and put a multiplication and the bottom right quadrant do a division sign. And in each of these quadrants, you look at the tasks that you're currently doing and you say to yourself, this task is what it, what I'm doing with this task. Is it adding to the success of the organization or is it subtracting from? Or is it multiplying the success of the organization or is it dividing the organization? And as you go through your task list and the task lists of those on your team, it should become somewhat clear that if you're not doing things that either plus or multiply the organization, that the other tasks need to be given away. Now, another way that you can look at this, once you've kind of you know, distilled that list of things, we have a, a, a model that we call the three columns exercise. 
And um, it, it goes something like this. So draw two lines down the, the, the middle of a page and that will create three different columns. And the first column is, is the things that I do and I do well and I'm really good at them and I kind of enjoy them. The second one is, is the things that I do, could take them or leave them, don't really enjoy them. Somebody else could probably do them. And then of course the third column is the dreaded, I hate doing this work and I definitely want to give it away to somebody else because it just, it, it sucks the life out of me. And when we think about bandwidth and we think about figuring out, allowing people to work in their highest and best purpose, these are two different ways that we can take and distill activities and tasks and give them to the right people so that everybody's working and doing the work that they most enjoy. And that'll help us understand exactly what needs to be given away, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I love that because then you could even take those exercises to help you create the job description. Because I know oftentimes agents will say to us, well, I don't even know what this person's going to do. So go back to those exercises with the team and, and for yourself and go create the job description that way. Go figure out that all of these things on this list need to be someone else's job. I need a who to do it. So go hire the who that's great at all those things. So love right. those exercises. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. No, our pleasure. Yeah, great example. So now we have the who dialed in. Let's go to the how. All right. I, I got the when. I got the who. How the heck do I go find this person, Zach? So this is probably where we find many of our clients sort of in that no man's land that sort of stalls them. Like it all sounds good. I know now I need to hire somebody and I think I got it figured out who I need. How do I find the person? And, and so the good news is that we're here and we're coaches and we do know how to do it and we're going to help you figure it out. And so we use a model that we call the 10531. And um, if you know anything about uh, the coaching company and Middleton Elite Coaching, models are things that we use in order to help you guys to be really, really successful. And again, we, we talked earlier about trusting the process, allowing the process to run itself out, not taking shortcuts in the process. And, and that gives us the highest probability of success on the back end. So let's talk about the 10, 5, 3, 1. And this helps us under, identify how we're going to do this. And so when we refer to 10, 10 means that we're looking for 10 resumes that have the, that have the person that fits the job description that we're, that we're hiring for. And so that makes sense, doesn't it? However, what may not make sense is where do I find the people? And so there's a couple different ways. And the first way that is probably the most successful way is to go into your sphere of influence, the people that know you, the people that understand you, the people that you've had communications with before, and just reach out to them and say, hey, listen, I'm looking to like, you know, the Zach team is getting ready to grow and we're looking for an energetic candidate that can do X, Y, and Z. And you just reach out to the people that know you and you know them and, and, and give them the opportunity to help you out with that job search. Oftentimes, you'll find a candidate that may either be looking to make a change in their job. I'll give you an example. We've got one of our coaching clients right now who was able to fill a contract to post coordinator with somebody that was working as a loan processor at a local lender. And what a perfect fit because they had a relationship with this person before they said, hey, we're looking to hire for a role. Have you thought about making any changes or would you like to come work on our team? And just so happened that worked out really well. But the bottom line is, is the first place we're going to go fishing for this person is within the people that know us, our collective. Now, in the absence of being able to accumulate 10 resumes that way, there's a couple of other ways that you can do it. So you may have heard of employment job sites like Indeed. Uh, we particularly like one called Wise Hire. They're just a higher caliber of result that we found with that. And we can get into the weeds on that uh, specifically if that's something you'd like to, to talk about um, as a coaching client. However, what we're looking for again is 10 resumes that fit the role of the person we're looking for. Once we've got that, of the 10, the very next step is to be to set up a very brief, maybe 10 minute or so phone interview, just to kind of a quick get to know you, non-committal, hey, Thanks for your resume. I see here you did this and this. You know, tell me some of the things that you like to do. Um, we actually have a model to build questions around that as well, using the acronym WAY. Um, and again, I won't get too, too into the details on that. Just know that we have specific scripts in order to help you through this particular part of the process. Once you've gone through those 10 resumes and had 10 somewhat quick conversations, 
it should be somewhat clear that the five best people will emerge from that. Mm -hmm. And so that takes us to the five in the 10, five, three, one. And so the five is going to give you an opportunity to have a slightly more in-depth interview with that person. It may give you a chance to, to, to ask them some questions around, maybe we send them a personality assessment and you validate that with them. And you just ask specific questions around, it says here in your, in your, your, um, your uh, assessment that you are a team player and that you love to go the extra mile to make sure that everybody is happy. Can you share with me an instance in a previous job where that might have been the case? And so we, we use this opportunity to talk a little bit more and get a little bit deeper into relationship with them. Again, no commitments, just wanting to understand the, the personality stylings of that person. Because remember, if you're the boss, they have to gel well with you in order for this to work well for everybody. Um, and then that takes us to the three. Once we've taken those five and we said, there's, there's definitely three here that stand out. Now, mind you, it could be two and it could be four. But generally speaking, if we're looking at the model, 10, five, three is what we're looking to get at. And so the three is we're, we're, coming, we're coming around the home stretch here. Um, the top three horses are running towards the finish line. And in this um, stage of the game, this is the opportunity for you to dig in a little bit deeper. Um, maybe do a behavioral validation. Talk with them a little bit about how their behavior shows up in their work um, and just really get to know them. And so. At the end of that, um, as you sit there and you look and go, wow, I've really got three or two or four really great potential folks. Um, let me ask myself three really, really important questions. And the first question is, is this person the person I wanna be in business with or that I would bet my business on? It's really important here. You gotta make sure that the person that you're getting ready to take a chance on has demonstrated one behaviorally that they have, they have the work and the, and the ethic that you're looking for. And two, they have a personality styling that matches most closely with yours. Another question is, can I imagine being in business with this person forever? Understand that this process is one by which we're looking for the candidate that we're hiring once. And we're not looking to do this and then six months later have to hire somebody else. So we really, really wanna make sure that this person is somebody that we can see in our future and perhaps even see as a potential growth opportunity for them in, in the maybe some more leadership roles um, for their development. And then finally, and this is probably most importantly, and this, this may stimulate a question, is that am I willing to take a chance on this person financially for the next 60 to 90 days? And so if you can answer very clearly that the, the candidate that is going to fit the role uh, with those three questions, you have actually found the person that you'd like to hire. Yeah. Uh, Zach, I think you did a great job of explaining the process there. Let's imagine that I'm listening to you and I'm like, yeah, Zach, all oh, that sounds really good. That sounds like a lot of work though. Mm -hmm. uh, how might you handle that or how might you address that? Well, so I, I think the main question we have to ask, and I, and I say that the question is for our coaching clients or those that may want to coach with Middleton Elite Coaching is, you know, what is your temperature around hiring somebody? You know, are you comfortable doing it? Have you done it before? And if so, you're welcome to use the models and we'll walk you and hand, you know, to, to, you know, talk with you through the process and help you validate each stage of the game. And then there are folks that are like, I've done this 10 times and it's never worked. Well, then we're happy to jump in there and start from the very beginning and run the whole play with you. And we can even take it on ourselves and help you through that process. So there's varying ways that we can engage with you as a coaching company to help you make a really, really strategic and smart hire. Yeah, I think you make a good point there. You know, earlier you talked about the probability of success and, and, and we, we've all been at situations in our past lives and our businesses where we kind of hired from our gut and got lucky or we hired from our gut and it didn't work. And, and what you're describing though is, is a process that drives that, that probability of making the right hire uh, up higher and higher and higher. So we have a, a degree of certainty around it. Um, so I, I think you did a really nice job of explaining that. Uh, Debbie, what would you add to that? Yeah, you know, one thing that we see um, so oftentimes really, and it's a little bit of a trap when we start hiring and we reach out to our sphere and we call with what we're looking for um, and we get these resumes in 
that maybe are of our friend or our neighbor's daughter or our cousin. And we don't know what to do with them, right? Because we feel guilty saying no. And that's what I think is so important about the 10, right? We run them all through the same process so that you're not feeling like, oh, this person's easy. So I'm going to go ahead and make this higher. I'm sure none of the listeners have ever made that move ever, <laughs> right? But it gives you that, just that backbone of, you know, setting them all up against each other and really evaluating the skill sets and what, like we did a minute ago, the actual job description um, and comparing those. And I know um, one thing that we found that's been helpful is as you're sorting through those 10, you use any of these job sites, you'll get many resumes in. And so setting up some type of system, either it be a folder in your inbox, or if you're using a system like Wise Hire, a column that says screening interview, and moving them across, some people use Trello, there's so many things you can use, but moving them across to say screening interview, set them all up against each other again at a next glance, figure out which ones, if it's eight, if it's 10, if it's nine, whatever that number is, before you start those screening calls, um, and then move them along. What I will caution you against too is pausing. So, oh golly, I don't have 10 yet that I really like, right? And then we wait two weeks. And the one that we really, really liked is now has a, now has a job. Right. So go ahead and start those interviews as they're coming in, knowing that you ideally would like to do those 10 interviews and throw the cousins, sisters, neighbors, boyfriend in the pot and interview him too. But again, just like keeping up with that stuff so that you know that you are getting the best of the best, um, whether what it doesn't matter what level you're looking at, you know, the potential, the emerging or the proven set them all up against each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Great point. Uh, well, as we move to wrap up here, Zach, is there there any uh, parting words of wisdom that you would share with our audience today as it relates to hiring? Yeah, uh, you know, this is such an important part of the development of, of our clients' businesses. Um, in our job, and the reason that we're involved in their lives is to help them become more successful. And whatever that looks like, whether that be we find more time for you to spend time in the special moments or we find more money or we help you build a great big organization or we help you build a small awesome organization whatever it is that you want we do this very very purposefully and deliberately because we choose to have the best result for you so that put a bow on that thought the the biggest piece of advice that i would that i would hope that everybody would hear is that trust this process, be patient with the process. I know it can be easy to veer from the process when you think you have the one, but the process is there for a reason. It all goes back to, again, what Bill said and just echoing what we've talked about throughout this entire, this entire recording, and that is giving yourself the highest probability of a successful hire. And so with that, trust the process. Well, thanks, Zach. Great job as always. Debbie, is there anything else you'd like to share with the group before we wrap up? No, thanks so much, Zach. This has been great information. Lots of take-home nuggets. I'm excited for them to put them to work. Awesome. Awesome. You can grab the downloadable exercises and bonus resources from today's session at middletonelitecoaching.com forward slash TLF hiring. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.